Yo, all right. And audio is working. Hey everyone, how's your day been so far? How's uh, how's your week been so far? It's so nice, In, like an actual way. Yeah, I mean, you're working on Twitter, which I think is a really cool project. I hope you're having a good time with it. Are there things that you're very happy with about this week? Okay, yeah, it is very sunny. What about tech-wise? Like, how do you like... I mean, you started learning about something yesterday. No? You didn't learn anything yesterday, Stella? It sucked. Well, what did you learn yesterday? The meaning of pain. Yes. Who did yesterday's lecture? Carl. Oh, I hate Carl, right? Uh, he's the worst. Wait, it was y'all's cohort when I, like, was gushing about Carl. Oh, man. I went full on, like, oh, Carl, my bad. <laughs> just full, just blush. Oh, you. I didn't know you were there. Um, yeah, so, so today's lecture is on a hax, a.k.a. a jax, um, a.k.a. ajax, um, and this follows up on some of the stuff that you learned yesterday, um, what was yesterday's lecture about? I mean, I wasn't there, what did, uh, what did Carl talk about? Ah, there we go. Those those painful couple of letters. Je query. Right? Not a lot of people know this. J query, it's actually it's je query. It's I query in French. Je query. Um followed up by uh little known little known uh second library called McQuery, uh, <laughs> McQuery. So, you've started talking about jQuery, uh, jQuery yesterday, and today is week three, day uh, three, week three, day three, lecture on Ajax. So, we're going to hop into what Ajax actually means in a second. Um, I'm going to close a bunch of these tabs so that I don't have a bunch of stuff open. Let me check what I have in here. I'm just going to copy over some questions, a.k.a. what the heck is Ajax? And how do we use Ajax? Any other questions? Avert your eyes. Nope. Any questions in here? We're going to do another one. Why do we want Ajax? Where is Ajax? Who is Ajax? Right? All these questions that we might want to kind of answer for ourselves. Okay. Making sure I'm completely ready here. Got everything I need? Yeah. Okay. jQuery, McQuery. We figured that stuff out. What is jQuery? What is that? Because we're really going to need to figure that out before we move on with today's stuff. Right, so you're all jQuery experts now. What the heck is it? Should we do the jQuery lecture again? All right, let me just pull up my jQuery notes. Uh, all right, CD, jQuery notes. Now nah, I'm not going to do it. What's jQuery? What is it? It's a library, right? It's a library, and what's the library used for? Manipulating the DOM, right? jQuery is a library that's specifically really, really good for manipulating the DOM, right? We can use jQuery by going either jQuery dot stuff or shorthand dollar dot stuff. Right? I want you to know that jQuery and dollar, exact same thing. Dollar stands for jQuery. This is like an object. You know, dollar. And then I'll go inside and access some properties. So you probably saw some interesting things yesterday, such as uh, 
Oh, wait. Did I say... Yeah, I mean, that's fine. But dollar and then percent... Uh, not percent. Uh, parentheses. To do stuff with it. Right? So you might have gone dollar uh, H1. And here I'm using jQuery. Um, I don't know why I went dot. I should have gone parens. My bad. Um, I'm using jQuery to grab all of the H1s on the page. Or here I'm using um, jQuery to grab just the things that say that they have a special class. Right? Then I can use jQuery not just to grab stuff from the DOM, but also to manipulate it. And the thing that's going to be really cool about this is that I can go nuts. I can go to a website that has jQuery such as Wikipedia. And if I check in the in the console here for Wikipedia and I type out the words jQuery, like looks like the developers of Wikipedia, they've loaded up jQuery in here, right? And I can start using jQuery doing things like, okay, well, get me the H1s. Sick. That was a selector to get me the H1s. Uh, get me the H2s. Right? Sick. There's something a little bit different about this result. Instead of only getting one thing back in this array, I got a whole bunch of things back because there's lots of H2s on this page. So I can grab things, and I can also change things like the, um, the can I, is it text? Uh, h1 dot uh, oh because it's not equals I have to go boop I can go h1 dot text to set stuff for all the things that are returned by this selector so I'm saying give me all of the h1s there happens to only be one and set the text to haha okay and now my h1 it's had its text set to haha. I have a bunch of H2s. Each of these things here, each of these things here is an H2. If I wanted to modify all of those with vanilla JavaScript, I might have to write a loop. Right? I might have to grab everything and then loop over it. But with jQuery, right? With jQuery, what I'll do is I'll say, hey, grab all the H2s and set to set the text to, hey, it's your boy. And now everywhere I look, I see, hey, it's your boy. Hey, it's your boy. Right? That's the power of jQuery, is that I'm able to do these kinds of manipulations in a really, really expressive way with just this line. I don't need to write loops. I just say grab all the H2s and set the text to A, it's your boy. Right, so I don't know if this is something that Carl specifically showed yesterday, so I wanted to just make a note of that, is that when you write these selectors, like you can grab everything on the page. Right. Does, does this seem like wild to anyone? Right? It's wild. This is cool. Um, sick. So jQuery does more than just manipulating the DOM. It also has a couple useful functions, right? A couple useful functions um, that we're going to use to tap into uh, super boosting our website making abilities. So in order to talk about what Ajax is, we're going to need to look at a website that doesn't use Ajax, right? We're going to have to see a website that doesn't use it and then a website that does to really understand the difference. So here is um, good old Wikipedia, right? Good old Wikipedia. And I'm going around, I'm like, oh, this page is awesome. I'm loving reading about Burnaby. This is so cool. Oh, it's the third largest city in BC by population represent. Um, I'm from Burnaby. So uh, like, sweet, let's see third largest city in British Columbia. Let's just go to that article. And I can keep making my way around around this stuff. Like, what's the smallest one on this list? Mirabelle, Quebec. Cool. 
And oh, Montreal. I like reading about Montreal. Just make my way, make my way downtown. Just like reading all these pages and and make my way through here. But something that I'll notice is that every time I click on one of these links, look right up there, the little little tab icon. Oh, wow! I had a little I had a little spinny dude, right? A little spinny dude happened there. Okay, let's let's also look at this thing right here. I know it's super super tiny. Um, you know what I could also do is just scroll up. There we go. A little refresh icon, and I click on a page. And what did it do? It did a thing. It did a thing. And then I go to some other website like uh, YouTube. YouTube.com. Right. The um the thing about YouTube is that I can start clicking around on stuff. Oh, <gasps> what? I mean, that didn't do anything. Let me click on a bunch of like things. Like, anybody want to watch the Toy Story 4 trailer? I'm gonna click on the Toy Story 4 trailer and keep your eyes trained on this thing over here. What? What? What is this wizardry? Stopping the little. Favicon from having a spinner on it or stopping the the little refresh thing if I go to say a particular thing like I mean let's go see Diogo Pedrosa's page if you keep your eye trained on this a <gasps> little bit different than Wikipedia right so this here oh Diogo Pedrosa with his trouble by cold play cover so what is this what could this possibly be oh he's really good I mean could this possibly be the title of the lecture Ajax now is Ajax really all about just removing the little loading thing up here no it's about much more than that Ajax as we're gonna see is a way of life and I don't say that lightly. Like Ajax is a way of approaching web development, right? Uh, I saw the total like, <laughs> you're like, what do you even talk? What did I pay money for? Oh my god. Um, Ajax, Ajax is gonna be like a way of approaching web development, and I'm just gonna keep this music going. What we're gonna notice is when I open up the inspector. When I open up the inspector and I look at the network, some interesting things are going to happen. So let me make sure that the network is over here on all. Now, I am, for the purposes of this lecture, going to filter my network requests. So see, you can filter the network requests that you see, like CSS, image, media. I'm going to set mine on XHR. And XHR is going to be for HTTP requests, right? So eventually, in a couple of weeks, you're going to learn about like web sockets, right? Um, today we're looking at XHR. So what I want us to see is that when I'm on something like Wikipedia, if I look at the XHR requests, so let's just start. Here are a bunch of requests that happen. Um, why can I not see the things here? Meh, whatever. We'll 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 keep it on all then. Um, I just want you to see that like some requests happen, and then that's it. It just kind of stops. And when I click on a different page, such as uh, something not grim, I don't know. Maximinus Thrax. Okay, I click on this. If you keep your eyes trained on what's going on here, I start again from zero milliseconds and go up. Right. So this here is a timeline of requests, and right now it's ended at like 2.5 milliseconds. Uh, two, 2.5 seconds. And every time I go to a new page, the page refreshes and this timeline starts from scratch again. I'm able to go back and forth. 
And every time I go back and forth, the timeline starts from scratch. And what's happening instead, as I'm here on Diego Pedrosa's page, is if I look at all the requests, it starts off, you know, here I am, 8,000 milliseconds in, the song's playing, this is beautiful. And I'm like, oh, you know what, I want to listen to his Redbone cover. So I click on this, and you'll notice that something interesting happened, or rather didn't happen, that this thing here just continued at the same time that it was. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and watch uh, Complaints Against Jim. And as soon as I click on that, we see that this thing here, again, does not refresh. It just continues. Right. So fundamentally, there's got to be something different happening on YouTube as opposed to Wikipedia right? in the way that it's handling your navigation of the pages. Right. Interestingly, on on YouTube, I, like if I go back and forth, like I'm able to go back and forth, that's fine. But you also notice that it doesn't change the time over here, right? So somehow, somehow, when I'm on Wikipedia, the page is navigating me somewhere else with a completely new history, and YouTube is saying, "No, you're still in the same place," right? This idea is Ajax, right? What we're seeing here is that there are requests being made without having to reload the page, right? There's requests being made without the page being you know, made to reload. Um, as a user, I don't even realize this, right? Let me click on this YouTube button. As a user, I don't realize that I'm actually still on the same page but what's happening is that the things that I'm seeing are just being manipulated, right? You've seen jQuery now, right? You've seen that you can maybe click on something and make something happen, right? Underneath, that's what's happening, right? Oh, is this our own lecture? Oh my God, it is. Oh my God, it is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so that's fine. And that's just gonna be me laughing at myself. Um so there's something going on that maybe tricks the user, right? The tricks the user into thinking that I'm going to different pages, right? For example, this little loading bar at the top. That loading bar only pops up when you're on YouTube, right? That little red thing. You know, you don't see that on, on Wikipedia when I go on different things. So, AJAX. AJAX stands for asynchronous JavaScript and XML. Right, asynchronous JavaScript and XML. What is AJAX? Well, AJAX means so a way of life, really. Um, AJAX means making HTTP requests without reloading the page. Right, and often incorporating in core incorporating um, the resulting data into the DOM, right? So when you did TinyApp, for example, you were making like submissions for a new URL, and that was going to refresh the page for you. It was going to take you to a different place, right? There was a form submission, right? And what was happening there with, with TinyApp, for example, when you submit the new URL form, it, your server processes that and returns a new page. Right? Like it returns a new page, a new HTML page in its response. 
right? Your server was saying, hey, this is the thing that you should render now. What we're going to be looking at now is something a little bit different, where when we uh, submit an HTTP request, because okay, the new URL form, this was an HTTP thing, right? It was like an HTTP post, right? We're going to submit like an HTTP request, again, maybe HTTP post, but what our server is going to return some data, right? Now, this stuff is going to happen asynchronously, right? What that means is that this isn't going to block our page, right? This isn't going to take control away from the user. Asynchronously from us means that this stuff can happen in the background, right? And it can just happen on the fly. So when I say returns some data, right? I'm just talking about this stuff right now. We're going to look at some actual demos in a minute. When we say returns some data, this could mean many different things, right? It might return like an image. Okay? It might return some text. It might return some formatted text in a particular way that our front end can understand, right? And that's where the X, X stands for XML. XML is a type of document that's used to encode a bunch of data. So originally, originally, when Ajax became a thing, when Ajax became a thing, and these people here at Adaptive Path published this blog post explaining what they called Ajax, at the time, the data that was being passed back and forth was XML. Right, XML is a data format that looks a little bit like, like this. Right, it, it looks pretty similar to HTML. Nowadays, we tend to use a different data format for transferring data back and forth, and it happens to be JSON. Right, so so the data that we transfer back and forth, it doesn't need to be XML, or it doesn't need to be an image or text. For us, it's mostly going to be JSON. Now, I would like you to take a look at this blog post that I'm going to put in the notes. Because, published all the way back in 2005, this is like the post, right, that really kind of put into the literature, I guess, that Ajax is a thing. It's not that these were the first people to use the strategy, but they were among the first to declare it as a strategy right now the thing is this is going to work through making http requests from javascript right so in the same way that you're able to use javascript to manipulate the dom right by writing things like change the h1 to haha -ha or whatever right there are also these things called x uh, XML HTTP requests. XML HTTP requests are a thing built into the browser API, right, that allow you to make HTTP requests, right? It lets you create an object that sends a request to a server, receives a response, and handles it. But something that you'll find out when you go look at XML HTTP request is this thing is honestly the biggest garbage. Like it is such trash to try and figure out how to use. Um, I still don't even really like. You have to make a callback, and then you make a new XML HTTP request, and then you add an event listener for load, and then you say open get this thing, and then you have to say send. I still don't understand this. If I was to look at how to make a post request. With this stuff, like, I don't. It scares me. Um, I don't want to use this stuff, right? But it's built into the browser to allow you to make HTTP requests without having to refresh the page, right? Conceivably, one would be able to do something like, one would be able to do something like make a, a GET request. This isn't real syntax, but make a GET request to uh, tinyapp.com/slash/urls. Conceivably, we would want to be able to do this. 
And that's where jQuery comes in, right? So this idea of being able to make HTTP requests and incorporating that data into the page, right? That is called AJAX, right? The idea is called AJAX, right? jQuery realizes that making AJAX requests, right? That making these HTTP requests with this thing here is a big pile of hot steaming trash. So instead, what jQuery does is it gives us some nice little helper functions. So what we're going to explore is the $.get or the $.post, right? And these are going to be methods that live inside of jQuery. Interestingly, there's a method called $.ajax, right? Which is going to allow us to make really any kind of request. Post, get, put, anything we want, right? But I really want the idea to be solid. Ajax is a concept. Ajax is a strategy for building websites where instead of me having to navigate to a new page every time, I'm able to request data and load it up on the screen. Right? We're going to see the benefits of this as we run through a couple little demos. Now, for me to demonstrate this, I'm going to need to use a service that I can make requests to. Right? I'm going to start off by using something like a website called JSON Placeholder. And JSON Placeholder is a website where I can make um, I can make get requests to things like slash posts. And I get back a bunch of random trash data. Just placeholder API that I can play around with. So for example, if I was to use Postman and make a request to JSON Placeholder um, for slash posts, I would get a bunch of stuff. Right, and we're going to see that in a sec. So, ba -ba -ba -ba. so I'm going to go like, oh, meh. I'm going to go like, oh, make a get to JSON placeholder dot com. Oh my God, I don't want an update. Uh, slash posts. But what I'm going to see is when I make this send request, this get, I end up getting back just a bunch of data. Right? I didn't set up this server, it just exists somewhere. Now, on a page, I might be able to make requests to that thing. If I had jQuery loaded up, right? if I had jQuery loaded up, I'd be able to do something like maybe dollar and then dot Ajax, which we're going to explore, to make a get request to somewhere. In order to do that, I need to have a page that has jQuery loaded. Right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead here and make a folder or, or a file. Let's just make a, a new file called, no, new file called uh, just index HTML. No, Ajax. Oh, my God. This is just not working. Um, Ajax.html. And I'm just going to write a bunch of just like HTML boilerplate in here. And for the purposes of this right now, like I'm just going to have an H1 that says uh, posts. Uh, some nothing really, just posts. And then instead of having script written out like this, um, main js i think what i'm going to do let's have public here index what i'm going to do is grab jquery and put it in my body okay so here i just have a link to jquery in my script that's in my body Carl talked about this yesterday. Why do I have to put this here? Uh, 
Like, why can't I write all of my JavaScript all the way up here instead? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Exactly. It'll try to run first. So if I try to write some JavaScript in a minute, that needs to deal with some, whoa, that needs to deal with some, uh, some of the HTML, I need to make sure that I need to make sure that it comes after the HTML. So I'm going to write some script in here. Really all I want to do at the moment is console.log uh, dollar just to make sure that it's in there. And I'm going to load up this page. I'm going to load up this page here in my browser. So uh, posts, cool. And I'm noticing that when I console log dollar I now have access to jQuery and all its goodness such as get me the h1 and change the text to so right I can do all this stuff now what I want to show you happening in here is that I can now access the dollar Ajax method. And the dollar Ajax method is going to be oh yeah, this is so many snacks. Um anybody want snacks? Like I have a lot. <laughs> no? Um I have way too many. Um the dollar Ajax method is gonna allow me to make those HTTP requests. Now I want you to use the jQuery documentation. And the jQuery Ajax methods and W3 schools, these things are awesome, right? The jQuery documentation, it's a little freaky the first time you look at it, right? But I promise you it's going to pay off, right, the more time you spend in it. What I'm going to learn in here is that I can, for example, make requests such as Ajax, HTTP, uh, you know, www.google.com. I, I made some request. I'm doing this to show you that I get a thing, XML HTTP request happening. Right? Ajax, this dollar Ajax is just wrapping that ugly XML HTTP request that I mentioned before. Right? But it's going to make working with it nice. Now, I've run into a thing called a cores error or cross-origin resource sharing error. This is because I'm trying to make a request to Google.com from something that isn't Google.com. So the Google servers, they've set their servers up so that only people on the Google.com domain can make requests to the Google.com servers. Right? It's a little bit of security stuff. However, the JSON placeholder people, they have not done that. They've set it up so that anybody can make requests. Oops. So that anybody can make requests. So I'm going to go dollar Ajax slash posts. And I'm going to see something interesting happen. I didn't get an error, which is great. Now, I can open this thing up and see that there's like a response JSON thing in here. There's a response text. There's this thing called promise. There's this thing called done, catch, always, abort, fail. This object that gets returned by dot Ajax, it's pretty complicated. It's got a bunch of stuff in it. Now, if I wanted to access the things inside of it, you know, like maybe response JSON, I might think, I might think that I can do this. Uh, was it, whoops, not an, I may think that I can do this because it looks like response JSON, which is a bunch of random posts from that API. Like maybe I'd be able to access this stuff. So I try and what I get back is undefined, which is frustrating, right? Why do I get back undefined when I literally just saw it up here? So I tell myself, okay, like how about I save it to a variable? Um, I can go let response equal this thing here, 
and then maybe go response dot response json cool okay that got me what i wanted awesome yeah i got all the things that i wanted now that i'm happy with what i've played around in the console i might write that stuff in my script i might say hey let response equal that thing and then console.log response dot what was it called response json and I go ahead and I refresh my page, and I still get undefined. What the heck? This is not fair, right? Why did I get undefined? I just wrote the same code, but in a script. Why do I get undefined? What does the A stand for? Asynchronous, right? So there's something asynchronous happening, right? Getting the data does not happen immediately. Getting the data takes some time. So if I was to write, save the response in this variable, fine, right? Like save whatever Ajax does, put it in this variable, that's cool, and then try to console log response.json, uh, response dot response dot JSON. This is going to happen almost immediately. And the network, like, it still hasn't responded back with the data that I want. That response JSON, it's still undefined, right? The reason that it worked when I did it here by hand is because, let me just refresh, is because, I just need to comment this stuff out, otherwise I'm going to get errors. Um, the reason that it worked when I did it by hand is because I gave it some time. Right? I gave it some time. But JavaScript's not going to give it some time. And you can't go in and say something like, let response, you know, that, and then write something like, uh, wait two seconds or something. Like, you can't do that. You can't make your program just stop. So what do we do to get around that? Mm-hmm. Sure. So with, with um with document ready, right, we were like registering some kind of listener, right? Or rather we were telling the document, hey, when you're ready, do this thing. Right? That's what we were doing with document ready. Right? What we're technically doing there is passing a callback. Right? We passed a callback to document ready to tell it, hey, when you're ready, run this thing. And that's what we're going to say here is, I recognize the fact that the response might take a while to arrive. I recognize that fact. So I'm going to give you the action that I want you to perform once you get that response. There's a couple ways that we can do this, right? This is somewhere people sometimes get tripped up with Ajax in jQuery, is that the syntax for it there's a couple like like a couple different options. One thing that we could do is bu 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 bu, use something called dot done, uh, done. So make your Ajax request and then when you're done do a particular thing. Okay, you might notice that the way that they've set up their dollar Ajax is a little bit different than what I've done, right? We're going to explore that together. So dollar Ajax, I might after this say uh, uh, dot done. And just like how to dot ready, I passed a callback, I can pass a callback to this. Right. Here's a callback that just takes whatever and it just console logs whatever it's passed. I don't know what's going to be in there. I just said make your Ajax request and then when you're done, console log whatever. Now the syntax might freak you out because I put it on a different line. This is that. But for legibility, I can break this onto a different line. 
just so that I can stack a couple things together. Right? If this is something that you don't like, that's totally fine. Don't do it. You can write it all out on one line if you want. But now, you see that when I run this, something's happened. Right? I'm getting that stuff actually being console logged out. So this is technically the, the data that I get back. What do I notice about what I've received? What kind of thing is this? Uh, yeah, it's like an array of objects, but specifically it's a JavaScript thing. It's not JSON. I didn't have to call parse, right? I didn't have to go JSON parse. It's just there. All the parsing was done for me, and immediately I can do things like get me the data dot length. Right? Give me data, give me the first element of the data, right? You know, data length, a hundred of them, first element of the data is this thing here, right? Massively powerful. With this one line here that says make a request somewhere and then do something with that data, right? This is amazing because from the front end now I can talk all over, right? I can talk to anything making, in this case here, a get request. So by default, by default, if you go dot Ajax and you pass it a string, you're going to get back, like, or sorry, you're sending a get request. I might want to instead do a post request. I might want to do a post request, and I could explore the Ajax method here and find out that, okay, if I wanted to do like a post um, I can pass it a method, right? The jQuery documentation here is not like necessarily beautiful for uh, finding nice examples, but more for like reading up on things. There is this example down here. I'm going to do dollar dot ajax, and instead of passing it a string, I'm going to pa pass it an object. Okay, I'm going to pass it an object, and I'll have to say the URL that I'm making a request to, the method that I'm using in my request, and the data that I want to pass. So let me just use that over here. I'm going to do the same thing with like a post response. Right, let's make a post response. And the URL that I want to send to is I want to post a new post. Right, so if I look at the documentation for J JSON placeholder, they tell me you can make a post to slash posts. And what I'm going to do is say my method is post. My data is, I'm just going to do hello uh, world, um, Kanye. Nice. Well, I don't know if nice is the nice, like the proper, I don't know. Kanye, good music. Um, and then food. Any any ideas for food? Probably potato. Um <laughs> Every time. Every time. Um, and I'm just sending off a bunch of data, and I might say data type application JSON. This part here, it's completely optional. I could even just get rid of that. And what I want us to see here is that when I make these requests, whoa, when I make these requests, I see things happen in my network. Posts. 201 posts 200 I got I did some things okay, at some point there was a get request some other point there was uh, a post request I can even preview the data that was sent 
and the response that I got back. Or sorry, preview shows me the the data that I got back, my bad. But I can see like what did I send them and all that. Right? So these requests are actually happening in the browser. They're actually happening. JavaScript is emitting these things. And when I want to maybe print out a response from this thing here, I might say dot, you know, done. And, you know, data, I might say uh, console.log, uh, data from response. And now when I check my console, here was the data that I got back from the response. And that JSON placeholder API, what it did is it slapped an ID on it. That's all it did. Right. Now, this stuff here, why is it useful with jQuery? Like, why is it packed into jQuery? Well, because I might want to ha have these things happen when I interact with the DOM. And I might want these things to happen in a way such that they interact with the DOM. So I'm just going to do one thing and then we're going to take a break. I'm going to have this not happen in my script like this. I'm going to do something more like when you click the H1, here is what happens. Right. When you click the H1, these are the things that I want to happen, right? Honestly, since I'm not even using these variables, I'm just going to uh, erase this stuff so that it's nicely indented and not gross like it is right now. Yeah, cool. So this stuff here, these AJAX requests are not happening immediately. See, there's no console until I click on posts. And notice this, the page itself does not refresh. This is what YouTube does. In one way or another, it's making requests for data when you click on things. And then when it comes back, as we're going to see after the break, it's going to take that stuff and do things with it onto the screen. Is this cool? This is awesome, right? You can build anything. Are there any questions? Dope. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, why would we? Y when? Yeah. Uh, that's a good question. I think that there's like there's more kind of overhead to setting up a website or, or transferring a website that wasn't asynchronous in the first place to being asynchronous. Uh, that's one thing. So say Wikipedia was built like a while ago, right? They might not want to go through and replace all that stuff. The other thing is that this here requires me to make JavaScript requests which isn't great if I'm dealing with like a phone that might not allow me to do JavaScript requests. Or maybe I want my website to be accessible to people with like older computers, older browsers, or, um, you know, in like not here, right? That's the thing. If you're thinking about accessibility, right, that might be something that you want to think about, right? Because people can always, people can always go through and block JavaScript from running on their, ser on their browsers. And then your Ajax won't work. In fact, if I went to YouTube and I disabled my uh, my JavaScript, so settings, and then there you go. If I disabled my JavaScript completely. So websites just can't run JavaScript. When I go to YouTube, it's completely useless. It just stays like this. Right? When I go to, to Google, 
and I try to search for things, the auto filling thing doesn't work anymore. And the page that I actually get back is like an old version <laughs> of Google. Right? So there are people that maybe don't want JavaScript enabled. Um, you know, so, so Google's a website, like a service that they've decided, okay, we'll still make it accessible even if you're not running JavaScript. YouTube was like, dude, we don't even care, man, I'm leaving you in the dust. Try to click on this little menu, nothing happens. Right? Facebook straight up tells you, um, where'd you go? Facebook straight up tells you that you need to get JavaScript. I think last time I checked, if you were to try to sign in, Yeah, it says JavaScript's required. It don't work, right? Because these are services like jo like Facebook and YouTube that have fully bought into that Ajax thing. They have fully bought into it. And now if you don't have JavaScript running, like, meh, all right, good luck. That's a really good question. Um, I don't know if that fully answered what you were looking for, but cool, cool. Um, sweet, so we're going to take like a 10 minute break. Does that sound good to everyone? So at 10.07, we'll continue on. Sweet. See y'all in a, in a couple of minutes. I mean, I'll still be here, but, you know, at 10.07.
when we had left off, um, this was where we were. We'd just kind of seen that JavaScript is acquired with a lot of websites. We'd figured out, I you know, an idea of what Ajax is, right? How do we use Ajax? It's really about. Oh my God, I don't, I don't like this. Indent. Boop. Okay. How do we use Ajax? Is really all about having something like XML HTTP request. So this is trash. So instead, we'll use something like dollar dot Ajax nicely wraps around XML HTTP request. I'm going to call XML HTTP request XHR. So dollar Ajax can nicely wrap around basically it say dollar dot Ajax some stuff dot done because we need to pass it a callback. Now, again, the, the notes that I'm going to send out are going to be nicely formatted with little code examples and all that. So we need to pass it a callback, so we'll have to say dot done with, you know, maybe data. Here's what you do with it. Why do we want Ajax? Why do we want Ajax? Well, I might want to be able to show things on the page um, dynamically, right? I might want to have things pop up on the page bit by bit by bit. So I'm going to do one thing here. I'm going to turn my JavaScript back on. I'm going to verify that I can see my Facebook. Should we creep on people? I haven't been on Facebook in so long. I, I clear my notifications, but I don't actually go on Facebook. Let's see. No. No browser notifications. It's hard to go. I just want to see if anybody's gotten married so far. Jessica Gaffney is interested in Michelle Obama's coming to town, which is cool. Um, I don't know if anybody's part of the cool dog group. Or is anybody here part of the cool dog group? <laughs> so, I mean... Like this here, though. Whoops, whoops. This is a secret group. You have to be invited to join. So uh, you know, I might, I might invite you. I might not. There's a pretty rigorous interview process. Um, it's like joining a frat. Let's see. Doesn't look like anyone's getting married yet. Oh, some New Year's stuff. So first of all, happy Noruz. Noruz Mubarak. It is Persian New Year today. Um, so I hope you're eating your garlic. You're not supposed to eat the garlic. You just put it on a table. Uh, but there are treats and stuff. Um, Mona was nice enough to set up like a Noruz table off towards the kitchen. So why do we want Ajax? I've said I want to load stuff dynamically. And just to show you as an example, we're going to start off with this page where I was doing this on click stuff. So I'd done something like when you click on the H1, run these things. Right? I'm going to get a little bit funkier. Let me get a little bit funkier and I'm going to do something like, okay, maybe when you click on the page, run this post request uh i'll still keep running that but without the console log um run this post request and then with the data that you get back right i saw that the data that i get back includes some interesting things like boop, uh food potato hello world kanye mu good music maybe i want to add this to the screen so I might take, you know, the the body of my HTML document and append to it something, right? I might append to it a new uh, 
H2, it says, new thing. And now every time I click on this post, that's awesome. That is so cool. What? Mind-blowing. I can keep adding new things to the thing, right? Just keep adding new stuff. Maybe instead of it saying new thing, I'm going to make this a template literal, get extra wacky, and go, hey, you know what? Show me the data dot food. And every time I click on this now, I got back potato. That's amazing. Right? Absolute power. Right? Absolute. Just think about literally any website you've built. Right? This is one of the final tools that you need to really be able to build anything. Is the fact that now you can change a web page on the fly. On the fly. Are there any questions about this at the moment? And do you see how this is useful to incorporate into jQuery? Because those HTTP requests, those XHR requests that I'm making, I want to then display that stuff to the page. Right? What we're encroaching in on right now is the idea of something called a single page application. This is an application where Everything can happen on the same HTML page. So what I'd seen with Wikipedia was that I needed to go to completely new HTML pages every time to do things. With YouTube, however, there was only one HTML page. And as I clicked on stuff, the Ajax stuff happening underneath, that was then being used to manipulate the DOM. So to me, it feels like I'm on different pages, but I'm really just on, I'm really just on a single page, right? So when people talk about a single page application, that's what they mean, right? A page that acts like it's on many, like, things, but is really just one. Does that sound like a bit clearer to people? And you see how the structure of a program built like that is going to be different than a st the structure of a program built with something like 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 what you did with tiny app where we had to have a bunch of routes that served html right those were serving like pages all routes instead are going to serve data we're going to set something up like that right now so here i mean i've made this page that does you know whatever posts and post stuff now what i want to do is uh get uber funky we're going to make ourselves a little little single page project. Some of the things that we're going to do, you'll be able to translate over into um, into your Twitter project. Other things you won't. Right? Just a heads up. I'm going to hmm I'm going to just make a new project somewhere. So I want to put this up on GitHub. We're going to call this, um, remember you, we did that dog thing a while ago, right? We'll just continue with something like that. This is going to be a uh, dog book, right? So dog book is going to be our, our service. I'm going to npm init dash y because this project here, this project here is going to have a node server, and the node server I'm going to use to serve some data, and I'm going to have a page that interacts with that data. So I'm going to need to start by npm installing express because I'm going to need to set up some routes. Let's wait up for that. Do, do, do. And then I'm just going to open this up in VS Code, and we're going to do some funkiness here. So I'll start off just by making myself a little a little page. Something like server.js. Just console dot log heyo just to make sure that I've set things up properly. I'll run the server with node server. Perfect. I got myself a 
got myself a Heyo. Hey, no, it's teeny, but there it is. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my Express server in a particular way. Uh, nothing particularly fancy, but ba -ba -ba -ba. and then really we'll do this. I'm going to paste in a bunch of stuff, and I'm going to cut out a bunch of stuff. Get out of here. Get off my farm. Bah. And bah. Okay. So this is essentially just an express server. Essentially just an express server, but I've put in some other things like body parser. There's an error handler. Something that does method override, which we're going to see maybe. Um, it's just a boilerplate that I pasted in. The important part, the important part is just that I have this get slash that sends out a file called index.html. That's the important part. Right? This other stuff here is just saying that I can parse forms that are coming in. And this one here says that body parser uses JSON by default. Right. If you want to dig through this later, that's cool, but there's nothing necessary in here. Now, I'm saying that, first of all, I need to have these things, body parser, error handler, method override. Let me just make sure that those are my package JSON um, so that my thing doesn't scream at me. Okay, then I'm just going to npm install just that I have all that stuff. Oh, added three files. Okay. Now, if I was to run node server right now, it's trying. If I made a get request to slash, it would try to give me an index HTML page if it can find it in some public directory, which I should call public and I just haven't made it yet. So if I was to go and actually try to make a request to localhost, what port did I say it was? 5,000? I'm going to get an error. I'm going to get an error that says, I can't find the file under public index.html. Just fine. I'm just going to make that file. So public, and then in here, I'm going to make an index.html, right? This is not at all different than your tiny app setup in that you had like a views folder and you were using render or whatever. I'm just doing this instead without EJS. I'm just sending back some HTML. So now if I try to access it, I get my HTML page, which is just blank at the moment. I'm using this because I want to serve my HTML page off of the same place as where I'm serving my data so that I don't run into any cross-origin errors. You will not run into cross-origin errors with the projects that you're building, like TinyApp. Uh, I mean, you already did TinyApp, but like Twitter or Chatty or the midterm project, like you won't run into that. Um, but if you happen to, just call me up if you see the words... C-O-R-S, like C-O-R-S, then come get me or an, a mentor and we'll help you out with that. But what I see now is if I type in stuff like H1, dogs. Get myself a good thing that says dogs. And I'm using this because I want to, from this page, ignore these errors. Um, from this page, I want to start making like jQuery requests. I don't currently have jQuery loaded up, so I'm going to have to do the exact same thing that I did with that other page, which was to get jQuery and inject it into, where did I put it? Inject it into my body.
And then I'm just going to have a main JS file that I'm going to use to write all my stuff. Um, and this thing here is going to be under slash public slash main. Should I do that? Hmm. Oh, whatever. We'll do it. It might take me just a second to make sure that this stuff's all hooked up properly. So it's not. Um, I am just going to pull what I did from this. So I had a JS. And my index was pulling from slash JS slash script. So one second. So in my public, I'm going to have a JS. This one's going to be slash JS slash main. And then I just need to check to see what I did in my server to make this work. Um, so, do, 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 do. Hmm. who knows? Huh, it just worked. What the heck? I don't know how it worked. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I set up the public properly. I said my public directory should be this thing. Uh, and I told express to serve all of the public files through the public directory. So I've just set it up so that my HTML is hooked up to the right JavaScript. But what I'm going to start doing here is just writing those, uh, those XML HTTP requests that I was doing before with Ajax, like the Ajax method. I'm just going to pull them from, from up here. something like that where I might want to say hey immediately try to from localhost 5000 slash dogs load up a bunch of dogs and then console logs the dogs uh, dogs I'm gonna run into an error almost immediately. It says localhost 5000 slash dogs is undefined. Or not undefined, but like not found. You get a 404. So I'm going to have to have that route on my server. I'm going to have to have something like app.get slash dogs. And say, hey, this is what you do with the request and the response. We're going to res dot JSON, you know, maybe a bunch of dogs. Everybody's favorite dog names, one, two, three. So on my main, I might say, okay, my response should have a dot dogs in it. Now, I need to restart my server every time I make these changes, which is annoying. So I'm going to use nodemon instead. So now every time I make changes, I just won't go refresh. Now when I refresh my page, I don't actually get an error. Instead, I get the dogs. So I've set up both ends of this now. I've set up the front side of it that makes the Ajax request. And I've set up the back end of it, which serves, serves some data. It says res JSON dogs. Now, I might want to actually have a bunch of dogs in here instead. I'm going to go const dogs. I'm going to have a bunch of these dogs. Um, you know what? I'm going to make the dogs an object. Uh, so will I? We'll, we'll make them an array for now. Um, here's dogs. Uh, the first dog here has a uh, name, Otis, uh, breed. Uh, I think Otis is a Frenchie. And then um, size, teeny. Uh, Frida. Cool. So name, uh, Frida. Uh, breed, a golden lab. And size? Uh, nods head. 
medium chunk. Um, cool. Any other dogs? Does only one person in this cohort have a dog? I can't believe. What is admissions doing? No. Uh, uh, fair enough. Uh, I'll put in my dream dog uh, name. Sir Dogsworth. Breed? Uh, hmm. Hmm. Chihuahua slash sheepdog mix. Uh, size? Confusing. Right? So here's my, my dream dog, Sir Dogsworth. Um, and now what I might want to do here is instead of that, I'll just return it dogs. So I refresh. And I got back all that data, beautiful, tasty data. Right? And now I might want to show this stuff up on the page. And what I'm going to do is write some code that says, hey, you know what? When you get the dogs back, right? Maybe something like render, render dogs. Right? I don't currently have a render dogs function, so I'm gonna have to make it, right? So I might do something like, okay, uh, render dogs is gonna be a function that takes in. A bunch of dog data. Bunch of dog data. Hmm. Should I do it this way? No, I'm going to say make a function called render dog. I think that would just be easier. And instead, I'm just going to say response dogs for each. Render dog. Does, does this seem confusing to anyone? Or is this fine? Render dog, what I'm going to do is say, hey, you know what, to the body or dogs list, append a new uh, li element, a new li element, and that li element is going to say, um, uh, let's see. Dog dot name, dog dot breed, and dog dot size. And now when I refresh here, hopefully it breaks, which is great. Um, I'll stop for each, render dog. Right. I'm trying to <laughs> I'm trying to append to a thing called dogs list which I haven't actually made in my HTML page. So let me just make a UL. And then this is going to say class dogs list. So now I'm going to have a bunch of dogs that have been added to the page. Otis, Frida, Sir Dogsworth. Right now, I can get as funky as I want with this. Right, I could make this sort of like what you're going to be doing with your tweeter, which is have your have your render dog be something pretty complex. Right, I might want my dog to look something like this. Like, time is it? So I might want my dog, for example, to look like. Ba -ba -ba -ba. I'm going to draw a little diagram. I don't want to save. Like, maybe here's a, an example of what I want my, like, a dog to look like. Like. That, and then I might have. Some text of like uh, Frida hey, there's like Frida here and then underneath it might have the other text that says things like uh, 
cats uh, breed and underneath it maybe like size right like I might come up with a design for what I want my dog card to look like this is similar to what you're doing for your project right where you need to come up with what a tweet looks like now right? you're given a design actually if I'm not wrong you've already done that right um, so I might do something like that and and kind of really go nuts with it I'm not going to because I don't want to right now this is what my dog card looks like now I am currently able to load many dogs but I might want to add dogs to the list what I need to do to be able to add a dog to the list mm -hmm. I have some I need to have somewhere where I can submit a new dog now I could like tiny app make a page where I can submit dogs and then come back to this page and just refresh but why right that's the Stone Age, right? We're going to do this cool Ajaxy style. So that's going to mean that I'm going to need some kind of form, right? Some some kind of like, I don't know, a new dog form or something. And my new dogs, I'm just going to say that my new dogs, they need to have a, a, a name. They need to have a uh, breed, and they need to have uh, a size. All of these are going to be text inputs. And just because this is going to be really hard to read on the page, I'm just going to write um, over here a p tag that says uh, name. And read and test. So, what we should see on the page in a second is this is some form, some form underneath the dog list. You know, surprise, surprise, there is my new dog form. Now, what happens when I fill out, you know, my new dog? So, this dog is going to be called. Um, Hmm. Ella, I think, is a dog. Breed, dog, size, bark. I, Ella filled out this form. Um, so, what happens when I click submit? What happened? Did Did nobody see it? Okay, I'll do it again. Bup, bup. What happened? It refreshed. It refreshed and it put the stuff up here in the URL. Right? So submitting a form by default is going to make a request that then refreshes the page. Right? Or it navigates you somewhere else. Right? It's not going to keep me on the same place and that's annoying. That's annoying because that's what I'm trying to get around. Right? So instead, instead I'm going to have to stop that. I need to manually say, don't do that. So I can do things like set actions and methods for my for my forms here. So maybe I'm going to go post as my method. An action is going to be to uh, slash dogs. Right. Technically, for this thing here, I could also instead of going localhost 5000, like I could also say slash dogs also works. Now, so here I can make a post action to slash dogs, right? And what I'm going to see is, again, you know, we've understood the fact that this is going to refresh the page, but I want to catch that. I want to catch that post. So in my server, I'm going to go, hey, app.post dogs. The request and response is happening. That's cool, right? And I want to have something happens here. 
something happens here and then eventually it should go res.json some stuff some something needs to happen but the issue still exists of me submitting and the page refreshing like I'm getting some stuff but I'm still refreshing where do I need to stop this refreshing action is that at the at the button maybe right like when I try to submit right on the front end something needs to say hey like Something needs to go like, oh, 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 stop right there. Right? Like, just stop right there. What are you doing? Right? Don't, don't refresh. Right? And that's what we're going to do. We're going to say, hey, you know what? When, when the form is submitted, when that new dog form is submitted, what do they call it? New dash dog. When the new dog form is submitted, I might have gotten the syntax wrong, but we'll fix it in a sec. I want you to do something special. I want to take that event, and I want you to tell it to stop right there. I want you to take that event submission and say, hey, stop it. <laughs> Don't. That's horrible, right? Do not do this. Prevent the default action. I'm going to say console.log stop. I might have gotten the syntax wrong. We're going to find out in a sec. If I go ahead and I fill this in and I click on submit, didn't work. Okay. Uh, form on submit. No, oh, now I got it. Dot submit. Hmm. 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 That one, that one thing. I need to say ID new dog. There's no such thing as a new dog tag in HTML. So, new dog. So let me just show again, submit. In a sec. Stop! And it didn't refresh the page. This is crucial. This is crucial to what you're building because you're going to be building a form that receives information for a new tweet or receives any information for a new post or in receives information for a new something. In this case, a new dog. I want to go, stop. Don't submit that form. I've got it from here, right? I'm going to use my Ajax skills to figure this out. And what I'm going to do is take a look at what the value of dollar this is. So I'm going to show you the code in a second that I wrote. I know I zoomed through it. So if I was to write this here as a function literal, And I console log what dollar this is. Dollar this is that new dog form, right? This is somewhere where I really do want you to pay attention. Is I have written my submit with a function literal being passed in as the callback, not an arrow function, a function literal. Because I want to take advantage of the value of this that's being passed in, dollar this. Refers to the form. And the form has all sorts of useful information in it that I've filled out. I want to grab that stuff, pack it into an object, and send it off. right? Or I want to pack it into something and send it off. What you're going to be doing, and I, I really want to point this out because people get stuck on this, in your tweeter, is you're going to be calling a thing called dot serialize. 
And what I want you to see serialize does on this is it's going to take all of the text that you wrote and put it together in one long string that goes, you know, name equals blah, ampersand, breed equals blah, ampersand, size equals blah. That's what that serialize method does. Serialize lets you grab any one of these forms any one of these forms that you see on a page such as this new dog form and I can go serialize that was mistake again and pound serialize and it will grab the stuff and turn it into a string formatted like this I'm going to use this and we're going to fire it off at our endpoint, right? Our endpoint is going to listen for things that are formatted in this way. And I point this out because this is the way that your tiny, you know, not tiny app, your tweeter backend is going to be set up, right? Is it's going to expect some data of this format. And now once I have this thing serialized, I might say, okay, you know what? Uh, let uh, or const serialized dog here we go. And I might then I might then make a post request to submit a dog. Now, I'd previously done this by using like an object that had URL and method. I'm just going to show you that there's another syntax for it that I could choose post. This is shorthand, so I can say post. I'm just going to say post to slash dogs. And then when I'm done, console log without responses. So I'm over here. I submit this stuff. And I got back a response. The page did not refresh. I sent something to my back end. The page did not refresh. I go over to my back end and I can start doing things here. I could maybe console log uh, request.body and see what's in there. Right? And now this is just a game of figuring out right, what am I console logging in here? Right now, my body doesn't have anything. So, part of this is because of the boilerplate that I sent in. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Let me just fix something up real quick. There you go. Oh, part of it is that. Part of it is actually not that. Notice what I'm doing here. <laughs> Am I actually sending any data? <laughs> I'm not. I need to manually say, hey, this is the data that you're sending. Here's some data. The syntax for it, I mean, we'll have to look it up. If I was to do it with the dot Ajax, I'd have to say data and pass it some data. If I was to do it with Ajax post, so this jQuery post method instead, there's some nicer shorthand uh, that says URL, and then you just pass in some data. And what I could actually do is also pass it a success handler. So you might find it really frustrating at how there's many different ways of writing your jQuery, right? Whether you're doing the manipulation of the DOM or whether you're doing this Ajax stuff, there's like lots of options. Um, so I could do done or I could write this as comma. Both of those are going to work. It really comes down to what you feel works nicely for you. So now here, I'm going to go ahead and try to submit that dog. Um, 
dog, 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 submit, and I check over here, and that's what I'm getting in my rec dot body. And from here, on the back end, I deal with it in the same way that I dealt with stuff in TinyApp. Right? In TinyApp, you were getting things and adding them to the to the database. I might do that as well on on my server side. And I say, hey, you know what? Rec.body happens to have a, what did I call it? It happens to have a name, breed, and size. So I might go something like const new dog equals rec.body dot name for the for uh for the name breed is going to be rec.body.breed and size is going to be rec.body.size and now I might go ahead and say hey you know what take the dogs push that new dog to it and also in the message maybe say something like uh, created dog and then data maybe I'll pass in the dog or something the new dog right. you can decide what you want to do with this right but I, I have to respond with something and now what I'm seeing is every time I go ahead and I send in a dog so this dog here is called dog breed of dog size of dog and I submit I get back created dog with this dog data here. And I'm going to see that if I refresh my page, I have dog now. But I don't want to have to refresh my page to see the new dog. What can I do? Would it help if I looked at this code up here that loaded all the dogs and maybe called it something like load all dogs and took this and put it in there so that I have a load all dogs function and then maybe Maybe I use that function, like load all dogs, when I start the page. And maybe as part of load all dogs, I take the dogs list and empty it. Because then what I might say is, hey, you know what? After you do the post, don't just console log the response, but try to load the dogs all, like all over again. Does this make sense? I'm saying, like we're going to see this code in action in a sec, but I'm saying when you load the page, load all the dogs. That runs this function. This function goes to the dogs list and empties it. Right? I want you to look into the jQuery empty function and see what this does. I will tell you right now that it takes a DOM element and it'll clear out everything that's inside of it. So if my dogs list is a UL, it's going to delete all of the LIs inside of it. And then I'm running this Ajax stuff, right? So I can call load dogs whenever I want, including after I do my post. So what I have here now is missing initializer in const declaration. What I have here is an issue. Uh, const load all dogs. There you go. Just bad syntax. What I have now is these are all my dogs. As I write stuff in here, dog, dog, and dog, when I submit, I got a dog. And I didn't even have to refresh the page, right? This is whack. Like, this is wild. I've done the whole stretch of stuff now. On loading the page, I see this stuff, and I can add as many things in here as I want. Let me go dog2. I've got dog2 in there. Right? You're seeing a bit of a flicker, 
because the way that I've coded this up right now is not reloading the page, but it's emptying out this thing and then re-adding them all in. So it's, it's adding a bit of like a flicker to it. I want to leave it to you to think about how you can get rid of that. If I'm loading all of the dogs right now, right? Maybe there's a way for me to, instead of having to reload all the dogs, just take that new dog and add it in, right? I'll leave that as like an exercise for you. Does that sound good? Cool. Now, I hope you can see what the usefulness of something like this is, right? Ajax is just a strategy. jQuery gives us an Ajax method, right? That we can use with, you know, dot Ajax, or we could use it with dot post. There's also a dot get if you wanted to do that. In the notes that I'm going to send you, I have a couple different examples of the different syntax. Just pick one and go with it. Right? Just be consistent. Right? We're also noticing here that the form hasn't been cleared. I might have to then go write some code in here that says, after I do the post, you know, go clear the form. Right? I, m I might need to write some jQuery stuff to go do that and go find those elements and clear them. So to kind of end this idea off, I mean, first I want to see if there's any questions. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think I th it's not actually on a page. Uh, if I was to make a GET request uh, just to uh, localhost 5000 slash dogs, I would see what you're seeing with the tweets. This, right? So what you're going to do is your AJAX request that you're going to make to load the tweets will be to this slash tweets. So you won't actually be dealing with this page. And it's not a page, it's data that's returned, right? Asynchronously, your JavaScript code on the front end is going to go retrieve those tweets, right? In the same way that I'm retrieving these these dogs. And you will have code that's written in like a similar fashion to mine that for each one of those adds them to the list right visually on the screen that's the thing is like now we have to think about we're retrieving data as opposed to a page right it's just that when the browser gets back a bunch of json it just shows it on it like this any other questions oh did that clear that up i guess for sure cool cool Mm-hmm. Prevent? I mean, I would think most of the events would be things like submitting forms, clicking on links, right? Like, I might have... When you click on a link, by default, that makes a GET request. Like, a, a link is a GET request, like an A tag. So, say I'm on YouTube. If there happened to be a, an A tag somewhere here, then that might take me like somewhere somewhere else. So so f let's see, for example, like some of these things look a little bit like A tags to me when I hover over them. Like I would just imagine that the Ellen show might be an A tag. We'll just see. No, it looks like oh yeah, sick. A. So by default, by default when you click on an A tag, it's a get request. But I don't want to be navigated away from this page. So what the YouTube people might have done is selected the A tags and said, when you click them, when you click them, prevent the default event, right? And then they handle that link for you, right? So it's this kind of stuff for uh, A tags, um, any forms of any kind, like that kind of stuff. Maybe if there's a click somewhere on a page that you don't want to 
have, I don't know, like a right click. Like maybe you don't want the context menu to pop up or some stuff like that. Yeah. Um, cool. Any other questions? Sick. So we'll just wrap it up then and kind of go over little learning materials here. Um, the information here says for what is Ajax, how do we use Ajax, the notes that I'm going to send you have this kind of stuff in it where I've written a couple little examples for making uh, a get request. Here's just some other syntax. Instead of using done, you can pass success into it. Right? Just some other syntax. Because the jQuery people want to give you a bunch of options. Right? Here's one that I did show was going method, data. But again, I wrote it in here as success. You could do this as done instead of success. Right? The important part is conceptually, we're registering some callback this should happen after the request. Right? That's the concept that I want you to get. Here's some more examples of making a get request with dot then instead of done. Dot then. Dot then. 